just do it live. So it's been quite a while, guys. Um, just do a quick update for a little bit of the front half of the video, and we'll get on with the Topps Dragonfly. So uh, trying out a new bag system, I can tell you. It's good for EDC around town. It's not the end-all, be-all, simple EDC bag I was hoping it would be. I mean, I could reduce my EDC probably, but it doesn't fit all the needs that I require. Um, so I'd say it's, a, it's actually an 8 out of 10. It's a really nice bag. If you all arrive in Konkin, I took it to the seamstress in town and actually got the molly panels sewn on. And she's really talented. She managed to keep the little uh, umbrella sashes or pockets uh, open. She didn't have to sew through them to attach the molly. So that's an amazing plus. So uh, it's enough for the basic EDC. You know, one water bottle for the kid, one for me. I've got a cup to boil water in. Uh, the rain poncho slash tarps in there. Uh, the diaper kit bag, extra clothes for the kid. And it's enough for, you know, some snacks, some uh, water, things like that. And then it's pretty much full. Uh, it's a, kind of a floppy bag. It's not that rigid bag that I'm used to with the Maxpeditions, etc. But that's fine. It's a very light loadout. And you've got this small accessory pocket on the front. But being able to attach a Maxpedition cap, EZR pouch, and the Bear Flare kit right there. It's, it's really quite... I, I enjoy it. But I can definitely tell you my Maxpedition Lift 4 totally kicks its butt. So... Lift 4 will be for uh, when I'm going out and about, doing more adventures. This will be just for, you know, taking the kid around town as kind of the diaper bag, etc. But enough about the Fjall Raven Conkton. It's a nice bag. Talk about it more later as the reviews go on. Uh, after a year or so of using, got this sent out, got this sheath done by a friend to get a 5 16th inch ferro rod at the top here. You put a drainage hole, <coughs> pardon me, and then I've got the uh, belt loot straps. Now, I am probably going to take these off and do a tack lock, so I find that on the belt, it's dipping down a little bit this way, but otherwise, it's an amazing job. So, the top Dragonfly, it's a great all-around camp knife, definitely a specifically designed bushcrafting knife with a wicked edge. My friend put on it the scariest, sharpest edge ever. And you got a nice, strong, reinforced piercing tip. You got this kind of Canadian belt knife shaped blade, this elliptical style, ovular, nice constant belly for like even strokes and slicing and cutting. Like this thing is so damn simple. It's, it's just awesome. I would say it's a great companion or runner up to the top bob. If you just want a little bit different shape. Uh, one thing that sets it off is you do have the pins, three pins going through the handle, so you have multiple lashing options for a lanyard, or as up what I would do, just uh, lash it to a pole, and I would have a spear that I could use for fishing um, if I needed to knock down a beehive to get honey, something like that, or just like slashing, slashing branches and brush, etc. Uh, you can use kind of the back end of it for like smashing bark, if you're coastal and you wanted to like smash open um, uh, oysters or something like that, could totally be done. But uh, let's take it against some monster logs. It's got a really nice micarta handle. But what I did was around the seams of the handle and the micarta, I took snow seal and just rubbed it along. And I have not had any rust issues or oxidization around the handle. The exposed part of the used blade constantly oxidizing and rusting. But it's exposed 1095 at that um, in that area, so I'm not surprised at all. Um, so four and a half inch blade, about nine inches, nine and a half inches overall. Pretty good weight, seven and a half ounces for this beast of a blade. I ain't mad. I'm happy. Just uh, it can do minor chopping. Like you could definitely delim with this and chop up smaller branches. Uh, just don't expect it to hack. You've got this main scallop and palm swell the middle it's extremely comfortable you got this smoothed it's no true guard but it's wide enough 
I'm thick enough and with a lanyard, there's no chance of slippage. You can choke up. I don't feel jimping's needed. Could add that on later if I wanted to. Um, I did. I am going to touch up the spine a bit more with the Kenanian Work Sharp so I could have a better fire striking rod. It will throw sparks, but it can be better. Um, again, with the tops, uh, like um, their convex Scandi, uh, you guys just know my preference. I prefer a Mora, like true Scandinavian edge. So there's that. Um, let's just whack this thing, do some logs. That's what we're here to see, right? There you go. Everything's pretty much rotting. We had a very wet melt. go through this guy. So definitely 10 out of 10 on batoning. There you go. Gives you a bit of an idea. You can just see how bite, how deep that bites, how sharp that is. There you go. So, yeah, I'm just powering through, not taking my time, but um, see more adventures of this guy along the way. Um, only thing I would add, probably a deeper choil or guard up here. Uh, sharpen that spine a bit more, or at least just have a dedicated notch for striking. Um, it's so simple and well done. It's definitely, you know, a 10 out of 10. Weight is right there for how solid and big it is. The only bad thing was the sheath totally sucks. It was falling out constantly. So you do got to get yourself a nice Kydex sheath for it. So sorry I've been gone, guys. The laptop died and lost about 20 reviews on it. So having to deal with that. A lot of personal things, moving, things like that. Um, more reviews on the way. More gear coming out soon, hopefully. So... Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Just remember to share, subscribe, like this video, and take care.